Austin Matthews um, signed. That's fun. Holy shit, is he about? It's funny because, so yeah, Austin Matthews four years, thirteen point what? Two five. Two five. Now the highest paid player. Um, people can say what they want. He absolutely deserves to make all the money in the fucking world because you it's want to talk about do that. that. Someone would say he doesn't deserve that. <laughs> uh, it's, it's fucking crazy when people try to, it's, 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 it's such a hockey thing too, though. Every other yeah. fan base is like overpayment. I'm like, you just say that if someone makes like close to nine plus, you know what I mean? Like anyone makes a ton of money. Like, Oh, classic overpay. <laughs> it's like, um, that dude is one of the, greatest goal scorers players centers two defensive players. forwards yep like he is what a top four or five player on the fucking planet number one center that you're like in an off year he's gonna score 42 43 fucking goals mm-hmm. and people have the balls to be like ha huh, not worth it and i'm like eh. there you go so i was just about to say it cosgrove He's already like flirting with the best American player of all time. If we're going off pure talent, yes. He's trending that way. Yeah, yeah, no, he's he's got that potential, but like I wouldn't say it yet. Right. Oh, no, 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 right. Right, right. right. Yeah. Yeah, we're, no, we're on saying. the same page there. What's he? Uh, he what are you, uh, how old is he now? 20 He's got to be 24 or 25. <laughs> which is so fucking great. He's going to be so fucking right, Google rich. magic. Which, so while you do that, it's so fucking funny. I think it was Sarah Volley that put it out. He is going to have made, he will have made a hundred and like $12 million by the time He's he turns 25. He'll turn 26 <laughs> in a month. <laughs> by the time he turns 30, he will have made like a hundred and ten million fucking dollars. And he'll still get the fucking bag from Arizona when he's 30. Yeah, exactly. Weird. Arizona just, in, just in time where they figured out their arena and all of their young players are popping. No, oh no, no. Um, and just in time for them to relocate and then um, another expansion team comes in in Arizona and there's a new franchise. So he'll be he'll go there. Um, I don't understand how. I mean, I, I'm all about the bit, but if no, you move, so I you relocate a team and then put a new one there like right away. That just no, no, no. Uh, well, so I was listening to Russo talk about. It. He's like, I don't care. Like, I don't think people understand how much the NHL wants Arizona, Phoenix, wherever it is, Mesa, whatever it is to work. He's like, if they relocate, then I was. He said this last week, I think. Sure. Uh, he was saying he was like, I don't think people, like if they do end up relocating and there is another expansion team, um, Arizona will be like the number one option because they want that to pop. Yeah. Um. Again, well, we've I, talked this before. I think it can like, work. It would have to be but, like at least a two or three year gap minimum. Right, 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 right. Oh yeah, of course. Um, so there, yeah, it lines up perfectly. Uh, five years. Um, but it was unbelievable reading some of the reactions. Like he's worth thirteen and a quarter, and it pains me to say it from Boston. It does. That motherfucker is that dude. Like, he is so nasty. He is fucking unbelievable. And I want every person in the NHL to make 10 sheets a year. I want everyone to get paid because it's insane Yeah, how much other sports are getting paid. But, um, I mean, you want to talk about if you're going to pay, even if it is an overpay, if I'm, if I'm Toronto, I'm picking one person on my roster to overpay. It's Austin Matthews. Either way, not. even if the, even if it is an overpay, but um, but it's not as annoyed as I get at the fucking assholes that like tweet that shit out. It's also very funny and I do love it at the same time because I'm all about chaos. I feel like you say um, that about everything. Like I hate it, but I also fucking need it. Yeah, no, exactly. Which is just so toxic of, of me <laughs> and how my toxic ass brain works. But um, good for Austin Matthews and the fact that he's now signed a five year deal and a four year deal at crazy buddy. Love that for him. And he, again, like you said, you know, he might even make more on a short term deal when he's 30 years old <laughs> because the cap's going to be up again. Oh, no, that's that's when if if Arizona aligns and it makes sense, he's going 
eight year, give me the fucking max, right? And they're going to do it. Yeah, exactly. And I hope Arizona adopts the, um, and this is something we've talked about before too, the uh, the Saudi method. Um, so their soccer teams, by the way, now are throwing, I think they bought Neymar from uh, PSG for like, a total package worth three hundred million dollars. <laughs> they're throwing the bag. They're actually getting everyone to go over there. There was a dude Except that signed. Messi. Yeah, Messi is rip. Oh, Jesus Christ, he is still. You got like you got to imagine everyone in Europe is like, there's no way. Like we knew the U.S. leagues were bad. There's no way they're this bad. That he's literally just torching the league. No, he's that good in a league that's not as good as any league he's I ever. Think both even. are true. Yeah, no, I'm not even. I'll, I have a soccer background, so I'm not going to go. I, I will. We've <laughs> delayed long enough, but uh, I hope Arizona does that. We're like, let's, let's fucking give everyone insane money. Let's just see if someone does it. Uh, so hopefully, Matthews is that guy. Um, yep. Now, but either I'm way, gonna... move, uh, move on from Matthews. But either way, that contract, love it for him. New love when there's a new highest paid player in the league. Um, I don't know if anyone's going to touch that for a while, though. Fair. Now, the real question is, what the fuck's going to happen with the Toronto Maple Leafs this year? Because we got Willie Nylander, who has basically said his negotiation starts at 10. Good for him. Cannot afford that. And he is an absolute baller, and we've already seen him hold out when they had his rights. They're not going to fucking bully him into shit. And especially and, with tree living. True. Um, I don't know, dude. The previous GM was a bum. Yeah, yeah. He's the worst in the league. Um, again, like, so now the Nylander thing becomes a big, big time question, obviously. But, like, if there was one guy that outside of the playoffs, if Leafs fans really want to do this, but if there was one guy that played to a level last season in the regular season that you actually couldn't have found a single thing to bitch about money about it's William Nylander. Cause mm-hmm. that dude balled the fuck out last year, scored 40 was like, he was nasty start to finish was well worth beyond 6.9 and he's been well beyond worth 6.9 for a couple of years. He literally the like the year that he signed late, that was the one year he really didn't like play to the level of a player getting paid that much. Uh I mean, he's well surpassed a 6.9 million dollar winger in this league. So, been underpaid I don't blame him. And, and, yeah. I mean, right. the body's not even cold yet, but again, the whole Dumba for Nylander thing still haunts my dreams. Yeah, it's fucking crazy, but we don't even have to go there. Nope. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, like, like, but now they're in the spot where, like, they're in win-now mode. Like, they've got a couple guys on one-year tickets. They've only got one more year of Marner after this. I think same for Tavares. Yep. Like Those deals are up the same gonna time. They're not going to trade him, but no. that also means, like, they're literally going to let him walk unless they're going to do crazy things to maneuver the cap to find a way to give them 10. Yeah. I mean, fuck. I'm trying, I'm, it's the, another team. So like Minnesota's cap sheet is, is wild. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, for different reasons. <laughs> so, All right. Signing off. Um, I did not, I didn't actually, it just hit me after, the, but uh, fuck, that's so bad. Um, like, I'm just I'm on their cap friendly page right now, and it's just like similar vein as Minnesota, where it's like the guys that are getting paid a ton of money are either like you can't move them, or you don't, you really can't, or they don't because even you don't want anymore. to. Like, what the fuck are they gonna do? I don't know. I mean, thank it's, God that's not my problem. I mean, I mean they do have what do they have next year in space? Thirty three projected cap space for next year if, if Nylander wants 10 of that it's down to 23 and then you've got they're obviously not going to resign Tavares at least not at a fucking 11 million when he's up in two years uh I mean it's so weird that like Nylander has been the guy 
that everyone in Toronto said, we got to trade him. Like, why? <laughs> why the fuck would you do that? I, so in my mind, if you have to move someone, right? Like we're talking out of Matthews, Marner, and him. I think he makes the most sense because right now, like if you were going to do it now or at the deadline, like he's got a low ticket right now. He's a guy that seems like he's inclined to walk anyways, unless you like fully pony up, you can get a really good return for him right now. Like he is. If, if he tells you, him. well, not if he wants fuck it. Not if he's saying I want 10. Cause though like, the price that he's at right now just to acquire him, right? Like you need to know that he is going to resign with you. And if he wants 10, how many teams are fucking like in a position to like actually capitalize on William Nylander in his peak? Cause he is now 27 years old. Um, old fucking man. Yeah. Basically in this fucking league, which is actually isn't the worst thing in the world, but, um, a like, year older than Matthews will play this year. And we just talked about how crazy young he is. <laughs> yeah, but that motherfucker's in a pot 60 fucking 10 years from now. Anyways, um, but you need to know Nylander's signing and what teams that are in win now mode or like now approaching win now mode can like actually sign up for a $10 million winger. I mean, dude, Ottawa might as well, right? Like the formula I can, works with the I can. Cap. I cannot. Oh yeah, holy fuck! I cannot even imagine. Imagine. Oh, that would actually be the best. Terrible for me again because it's just more in the Atlantic. But he's already in the Atlantic, so who cares? Uh, if that happened and like Toronto continued to lose in the first round or second round, and then Ottawa adds Nylander and like wins a cup, that'd be so fucking funny. Um, that'd be fun. But, yeah, no, so they're in a conundrum with Nylander, though, and, like, yeah, he's so fucking good. Oh, dude, so, I'm, I am obsessed. Like, you could, my, my if, dream line is Braden Point centering William Nylander and Nikolai Ehlers. Yeah, that should be easy to obtain. That's doable. I um, mean, okay, you could easily make the trades from Tampa's end. They've got the talent. It'd just be stupid. Right. Uh Oh, yeah, that's immediately – that's a lot. Oh. Which, I mean, we, we talk about Matthews being overpaid. People freaked out about Hagel, too. Yeah, really weird. Like, I don't know what it is about – I don't know if it's just a natural reaction for people to immediately carve other teams if they sign a player for big term – and more money than they've got before. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I think with him, it's more of a surprise, not because of him. Like, yes, partially, but I think a lot of people, especially from the analytics community came out pretty quick to defend him. I think it's more that like, how the fuck is Tampa paying someone six and a half by six? Right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you listen to, you know, Friedman and Merrick, Maybe that's an indication that the GMs are pretty confident we're going to get a big uptick next year in the salary cap. So definitely a possibility too. And the thing with Tampa and like they've done this even before what's his face took over. Um, they love to lock guys up certain guys. They love to lock up. Yeah. Cause I mean, you look at like Sergachev eight and a half. He signs for what was it? Eight years when he signed. Which, if like, that one still seems a little, yeah, that one you need him to hit as like. Yeah. A Otherwise, top, that one buried. Which I mean, the month he is. He's really good. I'm not saying he's not, but that that's all. He hasn't hit that. Commitment. He hasn't hit that yet. Right. Right. But you know, you look around. He all, they also like lock up like a guy like Chernak at five two, who's probably worth five two with what he does. He doesn't pop like with the numbers, but that role that he fills with them and how good he is at it. And just like, if you lock him up at five, two, and like you said, this with the cap going up slowly too, um, you know, they're banking on those type. And they did the same thing with like Kalorn a while ago, right. Where they locked him up for what? Seven years, eight years. Well, it like, look at everyone. They either do the right. shortest term. They because do that. Like, right. yeah, you are literally a rental or it's, we're signing you forever. Like, uh, 
Oh, uh, Nick Paul. They, Nick, Nick Paul. Paul. Just that's what I was yeah. trying to come up with. Yeah, yeah. Nashville used to do that too. They did the same thing with, uh, I think it was. Yeah, that didn't work out though. They picked the wrong guys. <laughs> right, but it was just. <laughs> we just saw this summer. <laughs> well, the deal. The deals were so funny though, because I think it was both Colton Sissons and Kelly Yarncrow. They did like six and seven year deals at like two dollars, two million dollars, <laughs> two dollars. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. That was that was uh, interesting. Yeah. I mean, so we'll see what happens. Hagel's sick, so he's so And like everyone, like jumps in immediately, like, "Oh, how could Tampa fuck up so bad making that trade to bring in uh, shit?" Now I'm just all over the place forgetting names. Who did they get from Nashville? Tanner Jr. Like, but that's the exact same trade they made for Hagel in a very similar situation. Like a guy on a small contract that has more room to grow but has shown a penchant for like being able to deliver throw him in the bottom six with tampa and you're gonna flourish and that's exactly what haggle did hasn't come through for Janelle, but it's like you know what they've been pretty vocal about their first round picks not meaning shit because they're always like end of the first round so whatever yeah and people can say all they want they won back-to-back cups and no one on that team makes more than 10. So their highest paid players make nine, five, nine, five, eight, five, nine, five. So the last no state taxes. Exactly. So there you go. <laughs> um, but we uh, should, we well, should move on now. Yep. We got a, for Isha, especially cause I know he's literally only tuning in until we cover this. An hour long of QMJHL hype up talk. Cause they just started preseason. It's beautiful. There's been zero fights. I know, and it's it's really what the game is all about. Um, nope, even even more upsetting than that. He is very very much on uh, watch to harm himself because of Elias Pettersson. <laughs> he told me if he not, like, short of him yeah. being no his exact words short of him being traded straight up for uh, Jack Hughes, he might hurt himself. So okay. Um, so this, I'm assuming, relates to the Merrick Friedman Sweden trip. And I, I'll be honest, I just saw occasional tweets. So I'll let you take the reins on this one. I'm not entirely. I saw that people were like, oh, shit, Pedersen, you might want to get the fuck out of there. So it's weird, though, because, you know, they just did the media tour out in Europe, all the prep for the games that are going to happen in Sweden which I hate that they're like in the middle of the season, but it's good that they do this kind of stuff to expand the game, whatever. Um, I love Nylander immediately said like, yeah, I'm either playing for free or I'm paying to play with how many fucking tickets I have to give away. But uh, He's whatever. Such a beauty. He's such uh, a beauty. That guy well, so they had a long conversation with Nylander and then literally aired two contract questions with Patterson. And it was like a little awkward. And then it literally kicks over to fucking Elliot. Yeah, so uh, we asked him some more questions, didn't really get anything further. He wasn't comfortable talking about the contract. Um, And then, like, him and Merrick just started, like, talking about it. And it's like, yeah, that's really fucking bad. (laughs) That's really bad. Um, And for for them, it's it was a little bit of a back and forth on, like, is it about the money? Is it about winning? And... it seems like he just cares about winning and it doesn't seem like he trusts the org, which shocker again, God bless Jim Rutherford. Like he did great things for Pittsburgh to get those back-to-back cups. As soon as that was over, he like, I don't know if like there was some kind of affliction, like Alzheimer's something. He, he, I don't think he ever lost a trade. In Pittsburgh, he lost damn near every free agent signing he ever did. And now it looks even worse over with the Canucks, especially with how he handled the Bruce Boudreaux shit. Like, that was such a joke. And JT Miller said as much in uh, an interview with, uh, I think it was Cam and Strick podcast. Like, basically said the whole year was a shit show. And, like, Boudreaux was the thing that he leaned in on. The one saving grace, though, for Isha is it sounds like a lot of the players have bought into Rick Tockett, including Patterson. So that is very helpful. Um, but yeah, it seems like it's more of a, 
Can they figure out the roster? Can they be competitive? If so, I think he's down to stay. If not, I don't think the money matters. I think he's out. So it's kind of a this year or bust, which is tough in a, somehow the tables have turned. Shout out Michael Scott. Uh, is the Pacific the best division? Mm. It's between them and the Atlantic. I like, mean, I probably the, Vancouver is the sixth best team based on last year, and they're not a bad team either. But like, you got Seattle and LA on the rise. You've got like Vegas will contend, Edmonton will contend, Calgary's gonna be better. I don't know that they're necessarily a top tier team, but like, that's a team you got to deal with. And then you've got two bottom dwellers in the Ducks and the Sharks who. Let's be real, like three years from now, both of them could be a real problem too. So like yeah. when when are the Canucks going to be able to push through and be at all competitive in that division? Right. Well, I well, whenever they do, uh, I would assume they are planning on Elias Patterson being a massive part of that. Um, and like, like you said, just some of the decisions they've made, it is – legitimately mind-boggling and fortunately they've got a couple young players who are some of the best players in the league at their position i think that's your dem code that last year was a complete i mean it was a shit show he was injured so i i wouldn't so either way in theory you've got the goalie uh but i mean some of like you said though like the complete turmoil that they entered immediately after they made their little bubble playoff run was legitimately stunning. And it was just like one thing after another. Now, like you said, though, Rick Tockett, people can say what they want about his actual coaching or whatever, but that's a guy that like every single player who's ever played for him has nothing bad to say like he's just Dude, he's a beauty most most uncoachable player in the nhl who also just happens to be the biggest unit and fucking baller that plays every game consecutively Love even when player. even when his wife or i guess wasn't even wife at the time is giving birth they'll make sure he gets out there for one shift before uh taking off Dude, phil kessel loved rick talking Followed oh, yeah. him to Arizona when Arizona was a dumpster fire. I mean, that doesn't really narrow down the years, but like it does make a big difference because, like, you want to talk about like front office turmoil, whatever, like the chaos, anarchy. Who's in the room every day, like deciding what they're doing to practice, giving the overall message from the organization? It's the head coach. So, I do think that, well, obviously, that helps a lot for guys that do or don't want to stay. Now, at the same time, there are plenty of situations where there's a great coach or a very likable coach, cough, cough, Bruce Boudreau, um, that because the turbo, they're just the front office is so bad and it's so chaotic. The guy's like, I got the fuck if I want to win, especially like, I mean, Pedersen's what, 25? But no, he's actually younger. You know, he's young, he's way younger. 20, oh no, he's only 24. Uh, not way younger. Um, like I don't know, the way you reacted to 26 versus 27 earlier, like 25 is yeah, same, way thing. same thing. Um, I mean, if you're a last person, you're about to sign a big ticket after this. You just put up a season that, like you put up numbers and stats in like underlying numbers. By far the best. Did he, was it? Did he hit a hundred points this year? Was he one of the guys? I think he was like, you're about to sign a big ticket. You have to know that there is some kind of stability in the organization. Totally. Um, well, and he actually even, uh, so this came from Friedman when he was no longer actually talking to Pedersen, but basically said that he looked at what like McDavid did this year. And you heard everyone like dry came out and said like, yeah, he just needs to be more selfish and like fucking shoot the puck and look at what he did. And Pedersen is like eyeing that. He's like, I think I'm going to be more selfish this year. 
and you could be looking at him popping fucking 50. I mean, he put up 39 goals and 102 points this year in Vancouver. So and he could easily go up on that, especially if things are even just a little bit better and more consistent this season with what you're seeing from their lineup and their power play. Like that could be lethal. He could be up here demanding a contract right there with Matthews. You, if he, if he, if he looks at me, he's like, I want 12. I'm like, I'll give you 12. Next question. I'm 12 and a half. I don't care. He's that. He's he's fucking unbelievable. Um, yep. Jesus Christ. Like, what a fucking tire fire. I wouldn't fucking make you but uh, I mean, we'll see what happens, I guess. It just, it, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean they're, running, they're, they're running that front office back, but, you know, whatever. We'll see what happens. And I mean, at least the owner's a normal guy. 